our final speaker is Kate Mitchell, who's um, one of the leaders of this SIG and something of a dynamo, makes it all happen. Um, and she's from La Trobe and she'll be talking about sort of what's happening in broader terms. Thanks, Colin. Okay. Great. Uh, thank you. Uh, hopefully you can all hear me. It looks like that's happening. Terrific. Okay. So uh, I thought I'd use this opportunity just to uh, as part of what we've been looking at at La Trobe, we're at a point where we have, uh, I guess, a minimum online presence uh, similar to, to Deakin in that it, it has some core um, minimum, you know, pieces that should be in the LMS for students. But beyond that, it, you know, we haven't gotten down to standards the same way that uh, Western Sydney University has. But I guess we're thinking about moving towards that approach and uh, also looking at how do we tie those things together with some other strategies that are happening and you know building good support uh, resources and and other components for staff so some of the work has involved you know looking at existing uh, standards out there from other universities so i thought that it would be a good chance to just take everyone through some of the things i'd found through that process and then open it up to the the group to discuss a bit further and, and raise you know, questions and, and ideas amongst the team. So uh, just a quick, there we go, it's still coming up. Oh, yep. So a little bit about me, like a couple of other Kates out there, I play the ukulele and I have a food intolerance. So just uh, so you know that about me and you have a sense of who I am. Uh, in terms of the review that I've uh, had a look at and that uh, a few of us here in our team have had a look at. Uh, we went through and found uh, online, there are a number of st standards and policies out there. So this review the, is just really some key findings and, and things that um, we found uh, encompassed, you know, La Trobe, Federation Uni, Griffith, RMIT, uh, Western Sydney, uh, which Lene uh, demonstrated prior, uh, Wollongong, UWA, James Cook, and then a few international. Uh, so part of what I'll do is talk a little bit about quality matters as well, uh, just because I did some training recently through the rubric. So the key findings in terms of, especially around the uh, institutions that were taking more of just a minimum uh, online presence, where there was a, a lot of variability across, you know, some that had similar to La Trobe, uh, you know, very basic minimum online presence all the way up to much uh, larger standards or benchmarking or strategies. But in terms of the ones that had some sort of benchmarking or standards similar to Western Sydney, they seem to fall under these key categories. So organisation design and orientation, um, accessibility and usability, learning resources and content, activities and engagement, assessment uh, and evaluation, policy and compliance and learner support. So uh, in terms of what that means, uh, in terms of organisation and design, it seemed to be around, uh, you know, have you organised your subject or unit clearly? Have you provided uh, some kind of orientation and welcome both to the subject, but also to, I guess, online learning and making sure that students could find where that, you know, the key information that they needed to find uh, and where to go so that they knew where to start. Um, media formats and things around uh, clarity and size, particularly around resources. So using a range of media formats, um, aligning your content to your learning objectives. So alignment seemed to come up a lot across the categories. Uh, so in assessment and evaluation, alignment, clarity, uh, so clarity of language, clarity of, of wording and activity types that you are asking students to engage in uh, and um, some other key things around policy and compliance, and which is, you know, probably no surprise, and learner support, which learner support uh, is, I guess, where Leanne mentioned the other teams often fit in. So academic support, ICT or technological support, uh, building support structures with other teams and, and directing students to where to get help with uh, either the system or with their studies or just you know knowing what their uh, rights and responsibilities are. So it seemed that a lot of them, the, uh, the institutions tended to cover these categories. Um, 
probably the the ones that were a little bit different were Fed uh, Federation Uni seemed to seemed to have a four tiered approach, which was uh, looking at some core uh, standards, but also some pedagogical approaches and some uh, then some customization for faculty level, which was quite similar to um, what uh, Leanne was talking about. So uh, they had a, a space for additional levels of uh, standards to be placed in at a, a faculty or a college or you know that departmental level. Some other approaches uh, that, especially internationally, uh, that I've seen uh, that Lene mentioned one, and I've just recently undertaken the course on is Quality Matters, and that's uh, from University of Maryland, I think, or Maryland Online, sorry, not university, they're a non-profit, uh, and they implement a rubric that is aligned to several standards. Uh, so what they, as uh, Lene mentioned, they have, um, there's, you know, I think there was 36 or something uh, standards and, and they come under, you know, seven, eight key categories. Uh, so they're larger standards, but with some, you know, sub standards within that. Uh, the key thing that comes out with Quality Matters is this uh, piece around alignment. So where they differ to say some of the other institutional approaches is around the fact that alignment actually uh, becomes its own, it's worked into all of the standards, but it also, or, or most of the standards, but it's also its own standard in its own right. So standard two, uh, it very much talks about uh, alignment and the fact that there need to be learning objectives at the uh, subject level and at a modular level, so that, you know, you've got weeks or modules that uh, make explicit the learning objectives that uh, you know part of that module that then feed into the larger uh, subject outcomes or objectives so and part of that process of uh, reviewing a subject or a, a unit based on that approach is that if they're not uh, listed and they're not measurable uh, then the actual review process can't continue you have to go back to the uh, academic or coordinator and and try and get further information or some work done in order to evaluate that subject. So that was a piece that I thought was quite uh, interesting and, and a, a nice approach in terms of really thinking about how do you uh, build in the pedagogical structures. So uh, talking about, you know, in, in tertiary, usually constructive alignment and, and trying to make sure that you know, your learning outcomes map to your assessments and map to all of your activities and content. And uh, it seemed that the fact that that was quite explicit and, and gave some really constructive uh, approaches on how someone should should aim to do that uh, was, was quite different to the way that maybe other uh, institutional standards currently work. The, uh, I guess the other pieces that I found interesting with something like Quality Matters were the fact that uh, the annotations around the rubric are very, very clear and the peer review process that goes with if you're trying to get accredited is uh, quite a constructive and positive process or appears to be quite a, a constructive and positive process. So uh, the, the piece that I guess uh, I'm always concerned about and we brought up before was around um, you know, audits and, and not wanting to say that something's an audit, but how do you uh, get quality and effectively evaluate uh, subjects and, and aim to improve. And the peer review process is is very much around providing what uh, Quality Matters calls uh, helpful recommendations, which have some very um, clear characteristics within those recommendations that they're specific, measurable, uh, sensitive, balanced and constructive. And so they essentially are written in a way that uh, that an academic could actually implement those and be seen to have clearly actioned that and then resubmit that subject and gain a MET and therefore be accredited. So it's not meant to be a punitive process. It's not meant to be um, 
you know, it's meant to be quite clear and object, you know, objective and, and clear and actionable for, for staff so that they actually understand how they can improve their subject design and, and the ways in which to do that and that there are, there's clear evidence involved in that. So I think that was a really nice way to look at um, the process of how do we you know, improve subjects and support people through because I think so much of what, you know, we do online and the way that we write some of uh, these standards, sometimes if it's, if it's vague and people don't know what that looks like in practice or there aren't good examples involved and it can be very hard to achieve the outcome that you want. So I, I think keeping that in mind that uh, part of it is about having some standards that may be aligned to good practice, but it's also about how do we communicate what that looks like and, and what that means. So I found that the Quality Matters Framework and, and Rubric had some interesting takeaways from that. So I guess this is a good uh, point to open it up to, to the group and ask well, what can we take from others. Uh, certainly I'm happy to ask, answer any questions uh, that may have popped up within the chat, but uh, I thought it would be a good chance to just find out what other people are doing and, and what you think we can take from some of these approaches around uh, either developing standards and policies that uh, align technology to staff capacity to pedagogy and to uh, sustainable solutions or, or ways of implementing that that are um, going to be positive and, and lead to the sort of outcomes we want. Uh, and even, I guess that then raises the question of, of what are the outcomes that we want. So that's that's me done. Thanks, Thanks Kate. That was, that was great. Every, this is, yeah, this has been really fantastic. Um, so rather than me banging on, um, do we have questions in the chat? Um, if anyone wants to turn their mic on and ask a question, please feel free. Um, I'm pretty sure that all works. Uh, otherwise, yeah, just post in the chat. That's good too. All right. Um, I, I guess... <laughs> Having said that I wasn't going to bang on, um, in the absence I, I will. Um, I guess for me the biggest question in all of these things is yes, we can absolutely see the benefits and there's certainly a lot of room in our institutions for, um, you know, supporting, um, you know, kind of raising overall standards. Um, how do we actually motivate um, the academics to participate in this kind of practice? What do they, what do they get out of it? Why, um, why should they do it in, you know, sort of fairly cold, hard, pragmatic terms? Um, I'm happy to take a, um, I have to answer that one slightly. I'm happy to understand, put, put their two cents in too. Um, my two cents in that one. Um, essentially, look, um, why do academics do it? Well, it's for the students, all right? You know, the students are here. They enrol into our uh, units, our courses. We do it for the students in a sense. We want to give them quality education, a, a good experience at, um, at university, essentially. And we, we are always needing to improve what we do going forward. We can't just stay, stay still. It's competitive out there. And, and I can only see that the, all the work that we're doing, we're genuinely doing this for the students to give them a better experience, better education in university. One thing I also would like to, uh, Tom Cotton here from La Trobe Uni. Um, one thing I'd also like to contribute to that point is um, helping the academics share their passion for their subjects and sharing that subjects with their students. Um, work through one subject redesign. And you know, that was a big benefit for them to one, look at their materials with fresh eyes but to really refine how they communicate with these online tools and systems 
um, that was a very powerful motivator for the academic that I worked with. Cheers. I think Leanne's um, right in that it is competitive out there in that uh, most staff understand that most unis these days ex have a certain expectation of, um, you know, what's offered to students. But there's also, a, I guess, um, competition. Uh, it's competitive out there also just in terms of for potentially for academics in uh, retaining roles within institutions in that uh, you do need to be seen to be uh, you know staying abreast of what's happening and mm. and looking to improve and looking to uh, stay competitive as well and you know given that uh, the workforce is pretty <laughs> uh, you know unstable now. Yeah. yeah Kate I'm just wanting to add to that as well like Part of my experience you know, at Deakin and working with a lot of academics and staff members here, I can genuinely say that every single academic here anyways in the Faculty of Business and elsewhere as well, I used to work in Central, that they genuinely want to do better. They want to help, they want to improve. Everyone wants to do that. And your comment earlier, Katie, about not sure how much could we get done without that high level support. Yes, yeah, high level support is absolutely crucial. They bring in the resources and that's why, and, and, and I do bang on about support and scaffolded support and resources, it's key. You, you know, with any organisation or higher education, if the leaders out, out there don't give us the resources and support structures to help our academics, you know, it's very limited. It's a very hard task to do. It's climbing up a mountain without, you know, um, with, with, you know, wind pushing down, strongly down. So leadership, resources, support, and like I said, every single academic, I believe, genuinely want to improve. So it's one of those things where with us, it's not that, it hasn't been that difficult for us at Deakin. Because, yeah, with that mindset in mind. Um, Leanne or, or anybody else, do you think that, um, you know, we're talking about leadership support, but uh, support for, I guess, in allowing, you know, encouraging staff to take up technologies or support that's, you know, provided by teams uh, to enable academics to improve or, or integrate uh, technology is, is one thing, but support can also be about, taking things away in terms of uh, allow, giving people time or uh, recognising um, teaching, you know, so much of what uh, unis generally recognise in terms of career progression is around research rather than teaching practice. And I guess I'm just wondering about whether uh, those are areas that maybe can help free up ac academic time or, or allow for better recognition or incentive, I don't know. Um, I don't think I want to go near the research and um, teaching nexus at the moment because we all know that research is important <laughs> priority across mostly higher education. But I can say that for us, um, teaching is very, you know, teaching is well respected at Deakin across Deakin overall. And in terms of the support, I mean, you did mention a bit about support. We do have um, initiatives, things in place where our senior ma managers understand that if you're going to go and trial something new in digital technologies or what it is in your units or course, they understand if things don't turn, you know, uh, turn out right or it's not successful, etc. So we have an evaluation system for every single unit and some units can be exempt if they're going to try out something new. We have award systems in, in place across the university to award staff members. So um, so I think, yeah, I mean, I'm being very positive at Deakin. I mean, I think, I think we have it really good here at Deakin. And, and hopefully Chia and um, Jan and et cetera agrees as well. But uh, yeah, I, I, think, I think we have it pretty good here. Yeah, and, and this is one of the reasons that we sort of looked at, you know, we, we've sort of set up this group is because there's a lot of different things going on at the universities, you know, sort of around Australia and everything, um, we don't necessarily hear these kind of stories. So I, I'm really grateful um, for you coming, Leanne, and, and also Kate for, for sharing everything. Um, so I'm just mindful of, of time. Um, so I, I think this has been fantastic. It's really great to see as many people come to this first uh, webinar as there has been. 
uh, and um, people signing up to the group and doing everything else. Um, I guess I have one final question to think about, um, which kind of follows on from the question on the slide, is, is, is where do we go from here? What else can we do with this information and these ideas? Like, do we just kind of stop at this point and say, well, that was interesting, or um, I don't know. Like, I mean, I'm, I think I'm going to dig into the Western Sydney stuff and um, we'll share um, other documents. So um, I've added the Western Sydney documents to the Tell Advisors site. Um, there's also a discussion forum um, that's on there now, just with a quick post. Um, does anyone have any other thoughts on what we might do with this? And Twitter. You don't have to um, have all of the um, ideas now, I guess. So, and that's kind of the, the strength of having the discussion forum. But yeah, like I, I think it would be fantastic. This, like, I think there's a lot still to be done in this space. Um, and I'd be really interested in sort of doing more work here if anyone else is. Um, and otherwise, um, yeah, I guess I'd just like to thank Leanne and Kate and obviously Chia and um, everyone for sort of helping make this um, first session happen. And obviously everyone who's come along and participated. So thank you. Thanks, I'll, Colin. <laughs> I'll stop the recording. Um, I just wanted to say that um, uh, I think there's already a lot of stuff out there. That What came up through just looking through different unis is that there's a lot of, even through some organisations as well, that there's a lot of existing uh, work that's been done and a lot of existing resources available freely on the web. So if we can share things uh, amongst, you know, our groups, then I think that really helps. Um, it means people don't have to reinvent the wheel. So, yeah, thanks again, guys. <laughs>